Hi everybody. I'm sorry, I had some technical difficulties again. Don't know why, but anyway, welcome into Watch Me Wednesday, episode number 81. Uh, last week I told you I came back from the Grand Canyon. I hiked down into a canyon, and this weekend I'm getting ready to hike the highest mountain in Arizona. Hey, Sue. So we're going, I'm going with a bunch of my friends, and we're going to hike up Humphreys Peak or Mount Humphreys in Arizona and yes there is still snow at the top so instead of hiking down a canyon I'm gonna be hiking up a mountain this weekend so wish me luck um, I do have my micro spikes for the snow because we're not quite sure how much is gonna be at the top but it should be fun and should be challenging my husband's done it before uh, I have not so it will be an experience for me and looking forward to doing it with a group of my friends. So we do some uh, pretty strenuous, exciting things on the weekend. But anyway, today I am here. Yes, Sue, it will be cooler there for sure. There'll be snow on the top of the mountain. <laughs> um, anyway, um, today I am going to show you a little machine applique tutorial. Um, I posted a few pictures of uh, one of the things that I am working on. Uh, it's the watermelon placemats uh, from Judy Niemeyer and I did show you a couple things when I posted pictures of it um, of a stitch I'm using and yes snow icky it's a four-letter word um, I did show some stitch uh, stitch that I'm using for this so I wanted to kind of show you how I go about tackling uh, doing machine applique and I know some people are not a fan of machine applique um, or applique in and of itself. And I actually used to be one of them, but um, as you continue to do it, you become more familiar with it, so it becomes a little easier. It, and I actually don't mind it anymore, and it adds a special little element to a quilt. So if you're ready to go and watch what I'm gonna do, go ahead, hit that share button, because it's gonna be a cool little tutorial. I'm gonna talk about um, how I go about it, a lot of people might go about it in a different way. You might learn a few little tips and techniques along the way. And it'll be neat to kind of hear your feelings on applique and um, if you've ever done it. And uh, if you're going to give it a try after this, that would be cool too. So go ahead, hit that share button. I'm going to tell you how I set up my machine first. First, you need to know I'm working on uh, a Viking Epic 980Q, which is what I'm going to demo on. Uh, the Vikings have pretty much uh, the same applique stitches, and I'm sure if you don't have that brand, you might be able to find a similar one to what I'm going to use. The stitch that I'm going to use is called a fur stitch. Yep, fur, because I have cats that have fur. <laughs> hey, Judy, nice to see that you're catching me live. Hey, Lisa. So. The first thing that I do when I set up my machine is I like, a, well, I, I should say I choose my thread color and I'm using black on this. So let me show you a close up of the stitch. So if you can kind of see that stitch, it does kind of look like fur and it is black. Okay. And I'm using my favorite thread, Aurifil 40 weight for this because I want to give it a little more oomph. So it's not a uh, really thin thread, but it's, it's, it's substantial enough that you can see it. Um, so that's the first thing I do is I select the thread that I want to use on the project. So first thing. Second thing is I do go into my um, screen on my computer, and, or my computer, my sewing machine, which actually is a computer, and I select the stitch. So I'm gonna kind of bring you around here to show you what I'm doing, okay? So, if you can see here, this is my applique stitches, and I've chosen the B12. See, it says applique B12. I've chosen that. And it tells me up here that I need foot B, and I need an 8012 needle, okay? Then I can set my um, stitch width down here, and my stitch length here, which I've already selected. I'm gonna show you a little tip about that. So I wanna bring you back around. Okay, so my studio is a mess. I'm sure you just all saw that messy studio. Anyway, what I did, 
I do a test piece before I go ahead and um, applique. So, cause I want to see what width and what length I want that stitch at. at. And I may have, uh, you know, you may see some other stitches you might wanna try and you might wanna test them out first before you actually decide on the stitch you're gonna use. So what I did was I stitched this out on a similar type um, applique. I just kind of rough cut it and stitched it out. But then what I did was I wrote on it, wrote right on the piece, the um, stitch number B12, the width 7W and the length is, well, 7W is W meaning width and the length is 23. So I was able to go back, turn my machine on when I was ready to do it again, turn my machine on and go exactly to that stitch. And I knew it was in the applique. Now, the only thing that's not on here is it is a fur stitch. F-U-R, um, like my kitty cats. So um, this is a great way to make sure that you go back to those that stitch and the correct measurements for that stitch because you want your project to be cohesive. Okay, so I also changed out my foot to the B foot on the um, machine and I changed out my needle to an 8012 and don't forget to put that zigzag throat plate in too because after you need that. If you have your single hole throat plate in, now's the time to take it out because the single hole is only gonna give you a straight stitch and you won't be able to do the zigzag. So, and I chose this stitch just because I thought it was fun and it was kind of perfect for this project. But definitely try stitching it out um, before you work on the actual project itself because you may or may not like it. Um, I actually really like how this looks. It would look pretty cool too in a variegated thread as well if you were doing that type of project. So think about the thread you want to use. Go to the stitches and, and see what stitches your machine has. Pick one you like, stitch it out, write it down right on that piece so you know what you so you know what it is. You have it, and then you can get right to your applique whenever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do demo. I have a couple seeds left on this to do and I'm gonna show you one of the seeds. So I'm gonna bring the camera on in and closer so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So bear with me. We're gonna get you all lined up here, okay? So I'm gonna put the camera down so you can see the needle and the applique. So, this particular machine, so actually I should show you a close up of the foot. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out of here. And the foot has, if you can see, there's these red guidelines. I'm gonna use that middle red and that is going to glide right along the center of the stitch, but the center of the stitch will be the edge of the seed. So that's where my center is gonna be because this particular stitch goes on both sides. It goes to the right and the left of the center and that's what I want. I'm also going to set my machine in needle down position. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle down. And my needle down goes right next to the edge of the applique, okay? So that's my center. It's right where that sensor red line is, okay? And on my machine, when the needle is down, the presser foot lifts up just ever so slightly so that I can move the piece underneath it. So when I cut, you know, when I come down to where I need to make a turn, it's super easy to do that. So I'm gonna show you exactly how this goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start sewing. And what I do when I'm sewing this is I'm actually watching the stitch and I'm kind of mentally keeping track of where that stitch is falling because when I get down here, I want that needle to be in that center position when I turn. I want it to stop in that center position. So I'm gonna keep going along until I get there and then I'm gonna make sure that I go slow when I get to the corner and watch for that needle to fall in that center position. You see how I'm slowing down? 
and I'm watching. And one more. And there we go. Okay, so now it's in that center position. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this and I'm gonna go ahead and clip this thread because I just don't want it in my way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line that red line up again with the edge and I'm gonna go ahead and continue to sew down the other side of the leaf or the seed. I keep saying leaf, but it's the seed. But you can see I started my stitch kind of part way down here because I want to come around this side end by kind of tacking a little bit over, double tacking that. So you'll see what I mean when I get to that. And you can kind of just go as fast as you want or as slow as you want on this as long as you're aligning that middle guide down that um, center part or the edge of the seed here. And this works really on any kind of applique piece. Mine, my appliques are actually, the edges are turned under and I have glued them down with my fabric glue pen that you've seen me use many a time. Okay, so I'm gonna slow down coming into this corner here and I'm gonna watch it go until it gets back to that middle. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, turn it, and it's gonna come back around, and we're gonna go all the way to where the other began, where the stitches began, and we're gonna kinda of tack over that. And there's a couple things out, a couple other things that I want to talk about once I get get this finished, just so you know what I've done here. Okay. All right. So I just tacked over it a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissors to cut that. And there you have the one that I just did. Okay. Kind of looks like an eyeball, doesn't it? Um, but anyway. So that's the first stitch. That, so I wanna show you a couple things. I'm gonna back up the camera again and I'm gonna bring it up so that you can see me and I can point out a few things to you. Okay, so, hey Laura, hi Lee, how are you? Um, so anyway, so because this is a, uh, it's a watermelon placemat and it's Judy Niemeyer's pattern, it is paper pieced, okay? So now, yes, Judy, that's exactly what I was getting to next. I kept the paper on the back of this because with the stitch that I chose, it's more dense, so you need a little more stability in there because if I did not have that paper there, what would happen is the stitches would start to pull the fabric in, and we don't want that. We want it to be a little more stable, so I left the paper on, and in fact, let me grab for you. Hang on one second. All right, I'm coming back. Sorry, I left them over on the side on my ironing board. So I stitched out the rest of the placemats, but um, I did go ahead and take the, the paper off the back of one of them. So you can see where that paper was. Let me just pull this light up a little bit. That light's glaring there. Um, so I took the paper off, but it really helped to stabilize that, that particular stitch that I did. So now I just have one more to do, and then I'll go ahead and I'll take the paper off the back of these. But you can see how the paper's still on. I'm gonna be taking paper off. But it really does help, especially if you use a super dense stitch when you are um, doing the applique. You want to have something on there to stabilize it. It's because you really, the applique is a one layer, but if you're doing this stitch, the 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 background fit fabric is one layer, but they're not layered necessarily together because the one side, you're only stitching on one layer of fabric. The other side, you are stitching on two, so you don't necessarily need the stabilizer there. You need it on this side where it's not double layered because that stitch is coming back on that background. So I hope that, I hope you understand um, it, what I'm trying to convey there, I think. Um, it just it just comes out much nicer, much smoother, and it doesn't pull that fabric in. So that's pretty 
easy, right? So um, let's see. Sue says, could you have taken the paper off and used a water-soluble stabilizer? Sure you could have, but it would have been an extra step, and I don't need to do the extra step because I would have taken the paper off anyway. So I'm gonna take the paper off regardless whether I do it before or after. And it to me, it just didn't make sense to do a whole nother step. So the paper's coming off regardless and I didn't wanna do an extra step because then I would have had to put the water soluble stabilizer on and then go ahead and soak it off. Um, so this way I save myself a little time. I hope that makes sense, Sue. Hey, Laura, how are you? It's okay, um, better late than never, right? Uh, so anyway, thank you for sharing too. Uh, so I hope that I was able to convey um, some tips and techniques that maybe you can use. I would love to see um, any applique that you guys are doing. I know a lot of you probably do um, needle turn applique too. Thank you, Regina. Um, I know um, you do machine applique. Have you used different stitches? What stitches have you used? I would love to see something. So maybe post some pictures in the comments. That would be awesome. I would love to see that. But, but that's all I have today. These patterns are, this pattern is available on my site. If I'm out, they will be re restocked. So you can always hit that notify me button and I will put the information above me when I'm done here, um, as I always do. And th this video will live on my Facebook page and it will be in my YouTube channel too. I got to get caught, caught up on uploading some of the YouTube. So anyway, but wish me luck this weekend. Um, I'm going to be sewing up until I leave this weekend and I'm going to be hiking up um, Humphreys Peak. It is an altitude of like 12,000 something or other and we gain, I, I think it's three 3,000 something from the trailhead to the top of the mountain. It's going to be interesting, and um, Grand Canyon was tough, but we weren't at altitude, so it might be just a little harder for us to breathe. So, yes, I will be bring, drinking lots of water. Always do when we hike. Thank you, Lori. Oh, and one other thing, just, um, I know a lot of you don't live here in Arizona, but we, and but you know, oh, hello, you're from Mesa as well. Um, awesome. So one of the things that you may or may not know, and I did post this yesterday on my personal page. I did not post it on my Facebook page, but right now there are several fires going on in Arizona. Some of them are contained and some of them are not. Um, as many of you know, I am an avid hiker. And right now there is a fire burning not very far from where we live. And um, hey, Elizabeth, my concern is, um, and I just saw in the news at noon while I was eating my lunch, that this fire now advanced from 5,000 acres to 9,300 acres, and it is 0% contained. Part of the reason it is 0% contained is because it is in a very arduous, um, rough area where the firefighters and the hotshots cannot get to. Um, so it's going to be a difficult one to fight. Um, but we experienced some the, the other night, two nights ago, we were out, as you know, I, I like to um, go out and get my exercise and we went out for a walk at 7.30 and the smoke was um, overpowering because of the way the winds were blowing. We couldn't see our beloved Superstition Mountains, they were completely covered. And we were walking and it was very, very smoky, very hard uh, to breathe. But my point being is, if you are out this summer anywhere, it doesn't matter if you're here in Arizona or not, please um, be careful, um, especially if you're campers, um, put out your fires. I don't, they don't know if this is... Um, a human caused fire there are a couple that were human caused uh, they are not sure at this point if this one is because they can't get to it but it is burning and it is taking up more acres as time goes on because they can't control it or contain it and I, I really worry about those who are out there fighting the fires and um, I really pray for them um, so just Keep your prayers coming for those fighting them. Hopefully the fire can be 
contains soon, well, the many fires, but this one in particular, because it's not very far from where we are. And um, I, I just worry about the the people fighting it and the people who live a lot closer than I do. So anyway, that's my public service announcement is something that's near and dear to my heart and um, anything you can do to help out and, you know, just be aware of your surroundings. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Wish me luck this weekend. I will have pictures for you. Uh, hopefully, I will be at the top of Humphreys Peak and I will be able to get those pictures to you when I get back. So thanks for joining me. Share the tutorial. I hope you enjoy it and I'd love to see pictures of your machine applique. Have a fantastic week weekend everybody. Happy quilting. Bye-bye.